I am very happy to uh, be here today uh, to undertake this interview, which for me is very practical in terms of uh, for making follow up and still getting involved with the, the network even after my graduation. My name is Dr. Judith Pete. I am from Africa. I work for Tangaza University College as a lecturer and currently running as the regional coordinator for a global program called Unisavitate Service Learning for Africa Hub. Uh, well, way back in September 29th, uh, the year 2020, I received a fellowship from the GoGN network. That made my day, it made my year. I was so excited about it. But then what was the fellowship about? In my fellowship, I was supposed to raise the profile of the institution, I mean, of the network. And ideally, I was also expected to ensure that members from the African uh, continent joined the, uh, the, joined the, the network so that we can be able to get more representation from Africa as a continent and of course the global south in general that would also benefit from this and a wonderful global network for the PhD researchers with the focuses on OER and OEP. So this fellowship has made me to learn so many things that I'm going to share with you this uh, afternoon and then I will be able to really uh, share the benefits and how the journey was during my fellowship moments. Yes, uh, I, I would start by uh, the fact that uh, this fellowship came at the right time for me when I just finished my PhD in the year 2019. Now, I kept wondering, how will I still get involved with, with the GoGN network after such a wonderful and enormous support I got? So number one, I was very happy because I was going to get my dream and passion of engaging with the network after my graduation and then find ways also of giving back to the network. Now, um, one thing that worked excellently for me during this fellowship is the fact that the sensitization processes for the network during my regular local and regional meetings, and we were able to meet uh, and to coordinate and organize around 10, uh, 10 meetings and 10 conference, I mean, uh, 10 meetings of which included the conferences, the symposia and some local meetings. Two, uh, the fact that uh, we were able to get one PhD candidate joining as a member of GoGN network that worked for me. And finally, there are also several other, uh, other members from the 20 universities that we coordinate under the, 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 this, this program I coordinate and they are showing interest either as friends or as those who want to join after the pandemic because the pandemic brought so many things into hold. Now, uh, first and foremost, uh, is the fact that uh, um, when we talk about a fellowship uh, in Africa, it's a very big thing. And when people heard that I got a fellowship from a, a university in the UK, it, it kind of blew off some people and it, it blew away and people were like, uh -huh, you are really a great person, you can get this wonderful fellowship. But then my biggest takeaway from this is the, the, the aspect and the process of learning to learn. You know, sometimes we have wonderful and huge expectations, but what happens? The reality on the ground humbles you. I was expecting at least to bring on board around five PhD fellows or PhD candidates to join the network. But I only managed to get one. Of course, there are several interests that came on board as well. So my biggest takeaway is that we need always to be open and flexible so that we can be able to learn from what comes, especially what comes with the pandemic. The pandemic ideally ruined or altered most of the plans that we heard for this specific uh, fellowship. But then we adjusted and we counted this as I will share under my, um, uh, under my uh, challenges and how we came off these challenges. So the biggest takeaway that I will repeat here is that we were able to learn on how to learn. Learning to learn is a process that this fellowship has given me. And by the fact that I was able to reach so many people from different countries who are also willing and could read from our flyers, both in English, in Kiswahili and in French, then that for me was a huge achievement for this process. Uh, 
Uh, thank you very much. Remember, um, the challenges came a long way where after I cut off my first uh, uh, ever in life research fellowship. And this is uh, during the, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, this slowed down a number of processes and plans and activities uh, as a region, and of course, as a global network. All the planned face-to-face -face, uh, regional activities, like the conferences we were supposed to go to Argentina, we were supposed to go, others supposed to come to Africa, we were supposed to go to Rome, we were supposed to go to Cameroon, Rwanda, Tanzania, all these were halted. And therefore, it, 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 it slowed down or changed our plans to go to virtual. So we responded by shifting immediately to doing things online through virtual meetings, virtual conferences, virtual symposia, and ideally this also helped because we were able to curb this kind of challenges in a manner that still best fitted the needs of these meetings. However, with the support of the Gojian team from the Open University in the UK, we were able to make those posters in good time which are translated and flyers in French, in Kiswahili, and in English. And this therefore also helped. We were able to share them via email and other social media platforms, and people were able to still understand the need of this fellowship, of raising the profile, and also inviting PhD candidates who are doing researches on OEP and OER to join the network. So that is one of the challenges that really the uh, hit us hard during this fellowship. Two was all about the general election in one of the member member organizations, member countries. Uganda were undertaking their, their elections, and so they had to shut off, the governments shut off the internet, so we were unable to reach members in our whole country, Uganda. And that was ideally one of the challenges that I will not fail here to mention. As we all know, friends, uh, the fact that uh, most of the African countries still have um, low internet connectivity and sometimes power blackouts. We keep, uh, we kept I mean, a number of meetings uh, postponed because of the internet connectivity, which was very slow or could not connect at all. And so these are challenges that we faced and indeed different time zones and poor internet connectivity sometimes also made us to slow down our planned activities. And ideally, uh, the fact also that not most of the PhD candidates have their focuses on OER or on open research and open practices. So that also is, you know, is, is a challenge still in Africa. But with the post COVID where people have learned the usefulness of open education resources and practices, and indeed now most universities are blending or integrating uh, ICT and OER in their system or in their curriculum, I am hopeful that things will be different in the future. Sometimes I lack words uh, to really uh, express the nature of support that I actually got from the Gojian team from the Open University in the UK. Um, I think uh, if truth be told, a lot of mentorship skills that I currently have and is currently also giving others, I learned most of this from the Gojian team. They remind us, the care and concern good language, polite, good language, even if you are late with your work, the manner in which the team was coordinating with us and giving us support that we required was enormous. To be specific, I remember the time when we needed the flyers and posters translated to various languages that could also help us spread the news or sensitize the people in the languages they're comfortable with. This was done very fast and within time, I, had, I received them in good time and I shared them with the members in good time. That is enormous in terms of administration from the GoGN team. And number two, the inspiration that you get from this team, especially when you are down. We have low moments because of the, the pandemic. Sometimes you find yourself, you are offline, not because there's no connectivity, but because there are also other things that are bringing you down as a human being and as a person who is also, you know, maybe as a, as a family person or one who is also working in a university and some other commitments. But the inspiration, the mentorship, 
And the language that you find from this team brings back the spirit to keep working, to continue working, and also to ensure that you meet the deadlines as per the requirements of this scholarship and the fellowship. So uh, I think uh, my, my learnings, the processes, through uh, the constant updates, the follow-up meetings, encouragement communications, development and translation of these materials in different languages in good time, review and the publication of the blog posts and the channeling of the fellowship funds through, um, through a, a very uh, su successful uh, platform. Ideally, it tells me that GoGN gave me the required support at the right time for the right purpose in order to achieve the needs and the objectives of this fellowship. The fact that uh, I'm holding a regional office uh, and uh, uh, this is the hub for Africa uh, that currently has five, five countries in it. And of course the global program is run in 27 countries. And that means that uh, my profile has gone up, not just because of the fellowship, but because of the network in general. Now, um, if you read my CV today and those who read my CV before 2019, there are two different things, meaning my profile as a person has gone up. Two, so, uh, I am currently the researcher of the year 2021-2022, meaning in this university, even though I'm still a lecturer, I've not gone higher to other levels like as a professor or a senior lecturer, but I'm holding the researcher of the year 2022. If you have a look at my Google Scholar profile, you'll be able to realize that I am highly cited, just to be specific. I have 775 citations, which gives me a H index of six and I10 index of five. This is not very easy to achieve. And this, all this is because of the, 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 the Gojian network and the fellowship as well, because uh, when people hear about this university in the UK, the Hewlett Flora Foundation funding this fellowship, they're like, okay, this is the person because all this reads in my CV. So as a person, this has really given me a notch higher has raised my profile. Now, let me just tell you something that came two days ago, and I'm very glad that they were discussing this today. The Handong Global University in South Korea, through a UNESCO unit twin program, have invited me to represent my continent, Africa, uh, in a consultative meeting on a face-to-face -face basis in August for seven days. What has this what are we going to discuss about? We are going to see what are some of the innovative measures in which higher education systems can be able to challenge future pandemics. And the other topic that I'm going to talk about is the blending and the usefulness of open educational resources in the higher education system today. These are benefits that come as a result of the fellowship and of course the GoGN as a network. And this should be a lesson to those who have not joined PTA I mean, uh, uh, GoGN and those who are currently new candidates within GoGN, that this network is the right network for you. I wonder how people finish their, I mean, uh, their, their, uh, their PhDs with those network. And finally, remember the research methods book that we developed as a team, all the GoGN alumni plus the team within the university of, uh, in the UK, that book is being used. And recently we published a book with the title Women's Contribution to Higher Education and Social Transformation, Implications for Policy and Praxis from Kenya. And the references that were guiding the women who contributed chapters in this book are all borrowing from our research methodology book. And therefore, I think the network has given me as a person higher profile. Now in my work, to be specific, and I want to be very brief here, my appointment, as, the, uh, as the, the regional coordinator for the Africa Hub on Service Learning came as a result of the GoGN parameters. For instance, coordination of the raw 4 d project where I had wonderful mentors like Professor Fred Mould, Professor Cheryl Hawkinson, uh, Ms. Tess Catmill, Dr. Tess Catmill and Professor Dutra. All these are avenues that came as a result of this network and all its affiliates and therefore, uh, my winning of this award also came because I'm publishing 
through the Godiel network. And most of my publications, if you look around it, reigns within the Godiel as a network. So as an individual and as my work, Godiel and the fellowship has really benefited me. And I have to say a big thank you. I will repeat this and uh, a thousand times is that if somebody is not involved in such kind of a network, I wonder how they manage to finish and accomplish their PhD, which has which is very substantial in the 21st century. And if the focus is on education and higher education for that matter, then they need a network like Gojian. So I really I want to commend those who have joined the network as members commend those who are anticipating to join the network to please speed up the process and join the network because this is the home you require to finish your PhD in good time because we have peer reviewers, because we have supervisors who give you that uh, support and inspiration you require to accomplish and finish your PhD in good time. You have experts within this network who are also going to help you come up with quality paper that can be recognized the way mine is currently recognized and my profile is hitting higher, not only in Kenya or in Africa, but the world over. So I encourage members to thank themselves for joining the network. I encourage others to join the network, both from my own continent in Africa and beyond. And also I urge those who have graduated like myself, please let us stick to the network. Let's see what we can give back to the network. Let us be mentors to those who are within the network and even others who have not joined, we need to encourage them. And ideally we need to keep the dream of Professor Fred Mulder going, let the candle lit forever. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, I just want to thank you, the team from the Gojian at the Open University in the UK. You are wonderful mentors to some of us who are coming up in coordinating and managing uh, global programs and projects. And I want to really thank you, Pak. I want to thank Beck. I want to thank, uh, thank uh, Fre I mean, uh, Martin uh, Weller and all others who are within this team. And uh, I, I'm looking forward to, I mean, uh, having a meeting uh, in, in many of our activities, many of our forums, so we can be able to share and encourage and advise those who are undertaking their PhD studies and get involved also in terms of research. We need collaborative researches that can encourage some people. We need time, from time to time, we have such kind of for us to talk. It helps because sometimes as a graduate, you may feel very lonely, you may feel alone, and that is not very good. So when we have such for us and such kind of networks, and it is also very practical and quite helpful to organize for us for our sharing, our experiences, our challenges, and building synergies for future open researches that can help and build Africa just to be specific. Thank you.